Welcome to another in our series of InterGraph CADWorks and Analysis Solutions videos featuring Caesar 2. My name is Tony Pollan and the title of this presentation is FEA Tools with Caesar 2 A Better Analysis. This presentation focuses on the improved safety and benefit that can be obtained easily by adding the more applicable data from FEA Tools automatically to a Caesar 2 pipe stress analysis. In this presentation, we'll be looking at when you would use FEA tools, and then by example, we'd like to see why we would use FEA tools. So let's look at what FEA tools is and what it's not. FEA tools is an automated CSER 2 model modifier that can solve stress and rotating equipment problems automatically with almost no input from the user. And we'll see how that works in this presentation. FEA Tools is not a solution for every piping problem. There are certain piping model geometries, as pointed out in WRC 329, that respond very favorably to the use of more applicable flexibility and stress intensification factor data. FEA Tools is designed for these problems. One objective of this webinar is to help us identify when we can have these problems. FEA Tools is a proprietary suite of programs designed for use with CSER 2 using approaches identified in 1987 with WRC 329 and that have already been implemented in ASME Section 3. These results have also been verified in the PRG lab using experimental methods from B31J and WRC 346. FEA Tools provides a standard application of approaches identified by WRC, EPRI, ASME, and by PRG. The unique quality of FEA tools is that the process of application is automated by a company that's been doing the same thing since 1990, and the FEA tools software development team is headed by the same person that was the original author of the Caesar 2 pipe stress program. But let's get a little bit more specific. FEA tools contains a Caesar input file modifier that takes a current Caesar 2 job file modifies the intersections in the file so that you're using more applicable K and I factors and then writes out a new CSER 2 job file. FEA Tools operates on standard branch connections, but it only takes a quick look at the PRG finite element library to know what components will be available in the near future. FEA Tools is also a collection of standalone finite element programs that can be used to evaluate components like contoured T's, bends with stanchions, bends with attached structural steel supports, hillside nozzles, and for comparisons of FEA results to WRC 107 and WRC 297 results. FEA Tools is also a SIF and stress evaluator that helps answer the basic question, how good are my SIFs and what is more applicable data? So let's emphasize again that FEA Tools is really three major separate tools. It's a CSER 2 file modifier that takes one CSER 2 file and converts it into another CSER 2 file. It's also a standalone FEA component analyzer in accordance with ASME Section 8 Division 2 Part 5. And FEA Tools is a standalone SIF and stress allowable and failure calculator. And this is perhaps the most interesting part of the tools. In this presentation, I hope to demonstrate all three of these capabilities. Let's start with the SIF and the stress calculator. We call this PRGIK. The PRGIK spreadsheet is available from the bottom of the FEA tool's main menu and lets the user produce either SIFs and K-factors or stresses and allowables. There are a number of situations where the SIFs from the code can be non-conservative and where the K-factors in the code should be improved. Appendix D in B313 Note 11 tells us that when the D over D ratio for intersections is between 0.5 and 1, the code can be non-conservative and that the selection of the appropriate SIF is the designer's responsibility. FEA Tools tells us how non-conservative the SIFs can be and gives us a more applicable SIF value to use. Appendix D also tells us that the simplified equations in Appendix D should be used in the absence of more applicable data and for D over T values less than or equal to 100. FEA tools gives us more applicable data and can be used when the D over T ratio is greater than 100. Most of this work started with WRC 329 in 1987 
and ended with the ASME project STLLC 0702, which aligned existing SIF and flexibility factor data. ASME STLLC 0702 started with WRC 329 and included subsequent work by EPRI, Widera, Wace, Rotobaugh, Matson, Pollen, and others. Let's summarize what all these documents and folks have said so that we know when we should take a closer look at our piping analysis. The B31 codes in their respective Appendix Ds currently state that K factors for branch connections are equal to 1 for all branch connection types and direction. WRC 329 emphasized that when K factors are large and the system is stiff, the effect on the calculated stress results can be large. We want to use FEA tools to take advantage of these large differences when we have high K factors. Large in this case are loads that can be overestimated by 10 times. Now generally including K factors in a piping analysis don't cause the loads to drop by 10 times. More typically, however, they will drop by between 20 and 200 percent or may increase between 20 and 200 percent. Clearly these smaller load errors are more important when there's rotating equipment in the model. But load errors can also be important when they result in changes in the pipe routing or supporting that have an economic impact on the project. We don't want to change pipe routing or supports when we don't have to. WRC 329 also pointed out that when the D over D ratios between 0.5 and 1, as stated in Note 11 and B31 3 Appendix D, that the SIFs may be half of what they should be, meaning that the existing code calculation is too low by about two times. WRC 329 on page 22 noted that when the D over D ratio is less than 0.5, the I factors in the run pipe can be highly overestimated by up to about eight times as the D over T ratio gets larger. WRC 329 calls this condition obviously silly. WRC 329 pointed out that for B313, the torsional I factor is not one and increases as the D over T ratio gets larger and that for size-on-size -size branch connections, the non-conservative error can be equal to about the out-of-plane I factor. This is the largest I factor that can exist at the intersection. So let's simplify these observations and decide what we want to do. There are two programs that we basically like to know when to run. We want to know when they can provide us with more applicable data and when they'll help us avoid making the wrong decision. Generally, we want to run the PRGIK spreadsheet when the D over T ratio is greater than about 35. In these cases, we start to see higher I's and higher K's that might not be consistent and where more applicable data may be useful. We should run PRGIK in these cases and compare the I factors and the K factors from the existing B313 with the more applicable data from PRGIK. And then we can decide if we have a problem regarding number of cycles, st uh, stiffness of the system, tolerable amounts of error, or rotating equipment. We also want to know that when the system is classified as a severely cyclic system per B313, because when the piping is cyclic, the PRGIK spreadsheet should be checked for errors that are on the order of two or more. WRC 329 pointed out that tight and stiff piping systems can have errors much greater than two due to incorrect K factor. And so when we suspect that a system is stiff, we want to see if the real intersection K factors are much greater than one. If the intersection K factors are not greater than one, we forget PRGIK and the Caesar II model converter and we go on about our business as we would normally. If the K factors are greater than one and the system is stiff, we strongly consider using PRGIK in the model converter since our results can be changed considerably. We run the Caesar II model translator when the system is looped and or stiff and or has rotating equipment or when we're about to make a change because of stress or load and the more applicable data we see in PRGIK might have an impact. What makes the Caesar II model translator practical is how fast it works. You try it and if it helps, great. And if it doesn't, then you know that you likely really do need to make some change to the piping system. Hopefully, FEA Tools helps the user avoid making changes to the piping system that just aren't needed. Thank you for sharing your time with us. For Caesar 2 news, success stories, and free webinars, please Google Caesar Insider Blog.